Hello! Welcome to Inky Art School. This video was a live class I held on Facebook as part of my free 10-day Inky Art School course. You can watch all 10 videos and get the free downloads I mention at www.johannabasford.com forward slash Inky Art School. I'll pop a link below. And if you like this class, be sure to check out my book, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands. It's jam-packed with easy-to-follow, step-by-step tutorials, creative project ideas, and of course, it wouldn't be an inky adventure without some pages to colour. Thanks for watching and have fun. Hello everybody! Straight into me today, I forgot to switch the cameras over. Hopefully you can see me and hear me today. If you can, can you please give me a thumbs up, a little bit of love, just so that I can see that everything is working. So today is day six of Inky Art School. Thank you so much for joining us. I am just going to quickly refresh this. Da -da, da -da. Yeah, lovely. I can see you all. Day six of Inky Art School. We are into the second week. My does time fly. Thank you so much to everybody who joined me for week one. If for any reason you are only watching this and this is your first in QR School video and you missed last week, never fear people. You can just scroll back through the group um, page and watch last week's videos and catch up. So how did you all get on? Did you do some drawing over the weekend? Now that's a rhetorical question because I know you have been. Thank you so much for sharing all your beautiful pictures online. I am delighted to see them. Something weird is going on with the Facebook group and that I can't always comment and like on all the pictures. I don't know, sometimes like I click the little like button and it goes like additional love heart and then it disappears again. It goes back down to the number it was as if I didn't like re-clicking it. So odd, who knows? I'm just gonna pop my phone in silent. Last week, Friday, it was a bit chaotic, folks, huh? Like, between swimming lessons, password gate, all that good stuff, it got frantic. So hopefully, we're back to our very zen, very calm, inky art school classes today. So, first thing we're going to speak about um, are practical drawing lessons. So, I spoke a bit about this last week, where I got a bit mad um, about, like, the drawing tutorials that teach you how to do things that aren't really practical. The panda eating bamboo is the case in point. I'm like gripping onto my hairband before I even start getting angry about that because it makes my, um, <laughs> like, I get so animated that my headband always comes off. But yeah, my aim is to show you um, practical, tactical tricks and tips that, that you can then use um, in your own art practice. And this is demonstrated perfectly by the first in today's gallery pictures, show, 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 let me show you. So let me show you, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, flip the camera, here we go. So this, sorry folks, is a picture that was uploaded onto the page from Fiona. And look, she has turned last week's tutorial where we were making these symmetrical crests into like a little leaving gift for her friend, Alicia. And she's put her own little message in there and that's so sweet. And look, she's made something really pretty. And I know a few of you have started doing that. I've seen pictures for class teachers, wedding gifts, so many nice things. So well done. This one was done by Susie and it was just, it's like just so pretty. Well done, Susie. I love the balance of the elements. You've totally nailed the symmetry. And there's some little sparkles and dots. Super pretty, Susie. Super pretty, Susie. Well done. And last up in the gallery for today is Fiona. And Fiona has drawn hers on the graph paper. Look how smart it is. She's used this as our axis of symmetry here. She's drawn it on the graph paper, flipped it, and then also inked the start of these little bitties in here. I think Fiona must have a copy of the book because that just looks lovely. And look, it's like, it's the two separate bits, but it all does look like one motif. Super smart. Well done, Fiona. Okay, folks, so today we're gonna speak a little about one thing that I know hamper so many of you in pursuing a creative practice, and that is time. Now, I know all about this one. So 
as somebody who's got two young children, Evie is five and Mia is two, and as you know, we've been doing these books for probably roughly the same amount of time, and it's been chaos, but a wonderful chaos. Time is something that is always in such short supply, and I find myself saying a lot, I just didn't have time, didn't get around to that, didn't have time, or oh, just don't have time for that, and sometimes that is true, and I just haven't got around to doing it. At other times, the reason I haven't got around to doing it is because it's not a priority for me. If something is a priority, I will make the time to do it. For example, I always have time to feed my kids dinner. I have never once run out of time to feed my children. So, you know, something that's a priority, you always have time for. And the problem with a practice like creativity is you kind of feel sometimes, or at least I do, that that's a little bit of a luxury. Like, you know, there's like, there's like a scale, like nutrition of your children, their safety, education, all those things are up here. And then like a creative hobby, you're like that, that's not really that important. So that's why it gets shoved to the bottom of the pile. But here's the reality, folks. You need to reframe the way you think of your creative practice because it's not just a hobby. It's a really valuable piece of self-care. And I know self-care is such a buzzword just now, but that's the way that you have to think about it. This is something that is looking after yourself. It's giving your mind a bit of a relax, a bit of downtime from all that chaos that's going on the rest of the time. And investing in yourself for just 10 minutes a day in something like drawing or a creative hobby or gardening, bit of yoga, meditation, all those things just help settle us out. And we are all so busy and without making the time for those little resets, the overwhelm can quickly get the better of you. And I know that firsthand. So when I first had Evie and she was a a tricky baby, I think it's fair to say, she was colicky, she didn't sleep, I was feeding her myself, I was also trying to handle work and I just could not cope with all that stuff going on and a good friend of mine and my husband said look you need to look after yourself like unless you're taking a little bit of downtime and investing in self-care which I kind of felt was a bit of a luxury at that time you're gonna crumble so folks that's what I want you to think of your drawing practice as self-care take 10 minutes every day just to do a little bit of drawing even if you just draw on a post-it note do it on a little flower, just do something, please. And let's see if it can help reset your mind, give you that bit of calm that we all need in those busy, busy days. You don't need to spend an hour doing a drawing every day. Who has time for that? I barely have time to do that. And this is my job. 10 minutes though, I think we could do 10 minutes. 10 minutes less of scrolling on your phone, 10 minutes more of drawing on a post-it. There's a challenge there. Let's, let's have a think about that. Okay, so today we are going to be doing a draw along in, oh, just check we're all okay on the feeds. Yep, we're going to be doing a draw along. So you should hopefully have either your copy of the book, How to Draw in Key Wonderlands, or if you don't yet have your book, you would hopefully have the download that I gave you away last week. By the way, folks, a lot of people have been sending emails and messages going, I'm not getting any emails from you. You're not going to, uh, I'm not going to be doing daily emails or anything like that for this course. We're just, we're just going for it. Who needs, who needs extra stuff to read? Not me. Um, so, uh, we are going to be drawing in that page of the book either find that page, it is in the ocean section, or grab your download. You will also need your clicky pencil. It's really bright there, sorry. Your clicky pencil. I'm gonna use a 0.2 and a 0.3 Statler fine liner, and I have my eraser. And I think we're just gonna, we're just gonna dive in, so to speak, with this ocean themed draw along. I'm gonna show you how I would color in, color in, sorry, draw that picture. You can get some ideas for your own. You can draw along with me. Whatever you want. Let's just crack on, so to speak. Okay, so I'm not going to um, work on the download. I'm going to work on the book. And here's the page here. How far into the ocean section is it? Oh, it's a good bit into the ocean section. 
Oh, look, it's really close to the end where the forest starts. So here we are. Now, I might zoom in a bit actually, just so you can see what I'm doing. So, I am going to start off with, I think, a few extra tangles of seaweed on this side. For those of you that haven't got your book yet, let me just zoom out a second. Look what's on the other side. It's a seaweed tutorial, step-by-step -step guides for drawing seaweed. So, let's draw some seaweed. I'm going to do a few more... I'm actually going to finish that tangle there. That looks like I probably started drawing it and then forgot. It's quite a straight up and down one. I'm going to do a few more of these sort of very simple ribbon tangles. If you're drawing these in pencil first, which you should always do, you can draw them like this and have them crisscross. And then what we'll do is when we ink it, we'll ink it in such a way that they all sort of interlock with each other and um, overlap is the word that I'm looking for. So I've got quite a lot that seem to be, oh they're all pointing that way so let's have one that ends up pointing this way. Gives it a nice sort of flowy feel. Oh, let's not do too much, I'm going to add an extra leaf into here that would be from this tangle here. I'm also going to do a few more of these sort of, um, what is, is it samphire, that food that you can eat, which I think might actually be seaweed. So look, this is how I draw these tangles. I draw one line first, and then like the branchy lines coming off of it, and then I'm just going to go over, the, over those with a sort of, almost like a bubble line. Imagine you were doing bubble writing, this is a bubble line. My pencil is squeaking on here today, something awful. I hope that stops. Let's do another one here. So, curved line. Little branches. And now we're going to do like our bubble line over the top. been drawing all morning. It has been glorious. I got in this morning, ear pods on, had so much drawing to do. Oh, it was like bliss. Haven't even, haven't even cracked open my emails yet. As anyone who's waiting for an email from me will know, we'll get to that later guys, sorry. Now this one I think we'll do a little bit like this tangle here. So Seaweeds, in my opinion, are the flowers of the ocean and quite often they've got the same sort of artwork and visuals as things that you would find in a garden. So that could very easily be a jungle, a jungle vine. There we go. Uh, I'm going to do a little seashell, I think, here. So draw like a V. And then a slight curved line over the top, another one here. My hands are nice at this. This kind of scallopy shell is what we affectionately call in our house half a mermaid's bra. <laughs> so anyone who's watched The Little Mermaid knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to fill in these little gaps with some little stones little circles and let's do some more seaweed here. Let's do one that is like this. So a curved line and then I'm going to do a teardrop at the top. Hopefully you can see that there. And then I'm going to start here and I'm going to do that. So I'm not drawing both sides of that shape, I'm just drawing a curve and then scooping it into that central vine or vein. There we go. So you should get that. 
and now we'll do the other side. Quite like that one. Do another one of them down here, but maybe it's loads of one. So wiggly line once again. Teardrop, upside down teardrop at the top, and then scoop it down like this. So rounded, and then a line into the middle. Now folks, I'm going to go, not fast, but probably faster than is comfortable to watch and draw along with. So what to do is maybe just watch this to the end and then I'm going to post it straight away on the Facebook group and you can watch back and catch up and pause it anytime you wish. This time I'm going to do more of these sort of inverted teardrop shapes that like little so leaves down like that and the same on this side. Let's have one last tangle. We'll do one that's a bit more. Do one like this. So draw the line. do some wavy lines like this. It's going to have to go behind there. Ta-da! Right, how about some fish? We drew fish last week. Let's draw a few more. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a big fish. So always I think it looks good if you have things like fish or perhaps butterflies no, a butterfly wouldn't really work. Birds, anything that's sort of directional is to have them looking in to the centre of the drawing. So for example, I wouldn't draw this fish looking out, I'm going to draw them looking in. And I don't know if compositionally that's the right thing to do, but for me I always just think it's more pleasant to have, have things looking inwards, as if there's something really interesting going on behind this tangle of seaweed and this little guy's like, hold up, what, what was that? And he's having a little peek. And I just think it draws the eye in and makes people curious to see what's in the picture. And also for someone like me that likes to hide a lot of little sort of Easter eggs and surprises in their drawings, devices like this are really cool because sometimes I'll have a fish or a bird or anything really sort of half looking towards something that's hidden, like a little visual cue cue, clue even, and that's a quite fun little game of play. We'll do some bubbles, so a small bubble, a larger bubble, an overlapping bubble, there we go. Uh, now, we'll do a few, these are nice big leaves here, so for frames like this I think it's nice if you have things sort of um, coming in from the edge and almost giving you a view, a view, a porthole view, a viewfinder. I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say, but like just so you don't have that hard edge with nothing on it. So let's do some of these big leaves creeping onto there. I'm going to draw the outline first and then this interior line here. And then I'm going to draw the middle vein and then these lines curved, so not straight like this, curved like that. There we go. And draw a few more. I'll draw some down here, I think. So these leaves would look just as good in a garden, in a floral arrangement, in the jungle. I'm not very precious about what can go where, so if it looks good, Ali, if it looks good somewhere, it'll probably look good other places as well, so you don't need to draw just 
a only underwater plants underwater is what I'm trying to say. This is your picture. You make up the rules. That's what I do anyway. I'm going to make this into a little pattern. These funny little blobby bits of coral under here. Let's add an anchor. So I'm going to draw a smiley face and then a straight line and then a little circle here and a little crossbar here. That's our bare bones anchor and then this is going to be like a little fishing hook kind of thing. A little barbed pointy bit here and here. Draw another little circle here actually and then just make these lines a bit thicker. So even though these lines are quite dark, I'm using quite a soft pencil. This is just an HB lead, which means after I bank it in, it should all just erase pretty easily. Now underneath here, this anchor is, by all accounts, just sort of floating on top of some coral. So what I'm going to do is add little circles of varying sizes in these gaps. And what that does is it kind of looks a bit like the little bits of rubble that you would get at the bottom of the seabed that just closes up that gap without you having to worry too much about it. You could do more here if you wanted. Easy peasy. I'm also going to do a little circle in the middle of that. Alright. How about a message in a bottle? So we're going to go up here to the surface line. And I'm going to draw this bit here looks good. Just a really basic rectangle. Don't worry about scale. I'm fully aware that this bottle is practically the size of the wheelhouse. I don't think that matters. There we go. Little rectangular bottle. Give it a neck. And this sort of bottle top idea. Um, to draw the message inside, I'm going to draw a little spiral like that and then just three straight down lines like that. Now, what next? How about, how about a few little fish looking in here? Now, I know I said I always do them facing inwards. I'm going to do a couple of little fish looking in here. Oh, sorry. Just notice where the camera is. I'm going to do them looking down into this bit and then I'll do something larger looking over here. So for these wee fish, I'm going to do them as they're growing. Oh my god, do you see that? It's the best looking kelp I've seen in a year. Let's go eat it. And do a little baby one. I can't help it, I'm gonna to have to do four because there's four of us in our family and to me that is just <laughs> that's just a little family of fish and if I didn't I'd be like off with me out. <laughs> there we go. Four little fish. Family of fish and some bubbles. Next up. I'll do, um, let's do one bigger fish, sort of looking in here. I'm going to do this kind of triangular one. I've seen these in, um, I've seen these in the garden centre in the tropical fish but I don't know what kind of fish it is. We'll make him spotty. Let's do that. We'll give him a little fin here. Add some spots. Right. That's looking quite good. I feel like there's a bit of a gap here. What will we do? I'll come back to that. I'll have a think. Next up. 
let's do some, I'm going to do a really basic. So you can't draw water, obviously, because it's see-through. What I like to do, though, is to do this pattern here, which is a bit like a fish scale pattern. So I'll do little sections. So I've just drawn these scallop lines. And in the midpoint of this scallop and this point, midpoint of this scallop, just join them up and keep going. And then you don't do them all the way. Just pick random little bits that you're going to join up. We'll do more here. So the trick with this is to make it look sort of a bit random, like it's not done in every single bit. So for example, we've not completely blocked that in, it's just a little bit here to break that up and give the idea of bobbing waves. I think we might draw, oh, I think that's all right. What's this gap? Do you know what? I'm going to ink what we've done so far and then I'll come back to that little gap and decide what to do. So I've just grabbed my 0.3 Statler Fine Liner and I'm going to start inking this in. I'm going to work left to right because I am right handed. See this? I was trying to put stabilizers on a bike at the weekend and scratched my hand. So that's the start of the inking. Another nice little trick when you're doing this wave pattern is to take some of the waves and just give them a double outline. You can also just do teeny little ones like this randomly here and there, which I think looks quite pretty. And do a double layer as well or some little polka dots and then the curve of a few. Lovely. Let's do our message in a bottle. Could be a pirate map or a letter. I'm going to do, so with these tangles, I'm going to go over, over, over and then have it go underneath that one and underneath that one. So obviously the tangles that you're drawing are going to have to go underneath the ones that are already there in front of the book. But other than that, you can then decide what order they go in. So this one here is going to go under all that but over this one here. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So it's going under those ones, but it's gone over this one here. This guy's bottom of the pile. If you struggle to work things like that out, the tip would be just draw it bigger and have a play about with how things intertwine with each other, what goes on top, what things you have to hide to make things look as though they're wrapped over each other and not just drawn. For example, this would be two lines just crossing each other. But if you do this with this one on top and then this one below, it definitely looks like it's, oh, focus, focus, focus layered. There you go. It's a helicopter going over. Right, let's do a little fish. I have seen some amazing pictures on the colouring on the colouring gallery. I keep wanting to say that on the gallery post on NK Art School. Thank you so much to everyone that's been sharing. I just absolutely love seeing what you've been drawing. I have noticed somebody, I noticed it just before I came on, she posted her, I'm sorry I can't remember what your name was, 
but she posted her pictures of her symmetrical crest and said, oh, I've tried it so many times, I just can't quite get it right. I'm just going to have to, like, give up on day five. And I was looking at it, I was like, you've done it. I don't, I don't even see what, I don't even see what the problem is. And I did leave a comment to that effect, but I think we're so overly critical with our own stuff that we see things that nobody else can see. And the trick is to just go easy on yourself. Like, it, it's fine to be always wanting to do your best work, but don't let that hamper you to the point where you're so overly critical that you're seeing issues and problems and mistakes that aren't really there. And I saw a great quote over the weekend. So Jenna Rainey, who is a watercolour artist, had mentioned that practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes for progression. And that is such a good quote because we are never going to be perfect. Nobody's going to be perfect. It's a silly thing to aim for. Why aim for a target that you are never, ever going to hit? Because perfection isn't, I mean, what is it? Unless you can actually define it, how on earth have we got a chance of getting there? So unlike with something like maths, where perfection would be an exact correct answer, there are no correct answers in drawing. So to criticise yourself for not being near this imaginary place of perfection is just so counterproductive. Whereas, if you reframe it as practice leads to progression, that's totally achievable. And you can see the progression of your skills, of your confidence by just dating your drawings and looking back on them. I'm going to do these little circles in here. Oh, here's our little, our little scallopy shell. I'm actually gonna do this like that. So other things that you could include in this seascape. Oh, sorry folks. Sometimes I get so caught up with doing it that I forget to look up and see where we are on the camera and I'm drawing way off to the edge. Um, other things that you could draw on this little ski skiscape, a skiscape, a seascape would be a giant squid, a terrifying sea monster. By the way, mythical creatures such as sea monsters are amazing to draw because there's no right or wrong, particularly with them. So if someone goes, what is that? Well, it's a sea monster, obviously. They can't say that's not what a sea monster looks like. I love drawing little sea monsters. Aliens are another good thing. Robots. When you start to draw things that you have imagined and you have made up, nobody but nobody can criticise it, including yourself. So two things that I sort of shy away from are portraiture and architecture drawings of existing buildings unless there's like a trick for me to get around it because it is very easy to have that close enough that you can tell what you were aiming for but not quite there enough that it's sort of jarring excellent example of this would be and and i know that most of you will know about this i don't know if this is a uk reference actually but Travelling carnivals. So when they come to your town and they have the fairground rides, there's the waltzers, the looping star thing, and they have spray painted images of celebrities on these rides. I've never really understood that, but I've seen ones where they have like Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie spray painted onto these rides. And if they're not quite right, you know what I mean, it just looks a little bit odd. So that explains my lifetime's fascination with drawing imagined flowers because ain't nobody going to tell me that this isn't how you draw that flower because I made it up and I see it is how it looks. See? Method.
Method to the Madness. Okay. Oh, the rain is absolutely hammering down outside. There's our anchor. What time are we at? Oh, half past three. Let me do these little circles in here. So a big one, a few little ones. I just love doing circles like that. I find it really soothing. I could just zone out for ages. And we'll do our little leaves in here. There we go. So again, remember and do these curved. I just think that makes them look a little bit more whimsical and charming. Straight lines are a bit, a bit hard edged. We'll do this one here. So if you're thinking about doing some of those interlocking seaweedy designs and you're trying to get some practice for how to do your over under over under, have a little Google at Celtic knot designs. So those are like the rope designs and they are fantastic for giving you a bit of that visual gymnastics at working out what goes under and what goes over to make it look curved and interlocked. Put a few dots in there. I forgot about this. Oh, I don't even know if you could see that. I forgot about this bit down here. Let me do this. And Let's do our big fish. Yes. His little spiky tail. And our scales. So the scales are actually the same basic principle and technique as this pattern up here. Uh, but slightly, but slightly different obviously, but the same basic idea and the same idea. Remember last week I showed you how to do that chrysanthemum flower? Same idea. Obviously if you were drawing a mermaid, perfect mermaid's tail kind of pattern. And while we're speaking about it, if you were drawing an owl, imagine this was an owl. <laughs> Um, and a mad so take away that. Look, that's how you would do his feathers. Exact same way. Exact same technique. This would be his chest. Imagine there was two wings here. You would just do his feathers like that. So that's exactly what I mean when I say learn a technique and then adapt it. So that's one kind of idea or concept. This idea of scallops lines doing that, wavy lines intersecting each other and you can use it on fish, sea, flowers and owls. Clever. I'm still thinking about what to do underneath this boat. It's maybe just going to be a big, another big fish. So somebody asked how to do a starfish the other day. I can't do a starfish just floating about in the middle I don't think but I will show you how to do a starfish. Let's draw these little lines in here. There we go. Some dots. A few little teeny tiny ones. I still can't see your comments, guys. This has been a comment free few days. Let me see on my laptop. Oh, I just kicked the camera. Sorry if that shut out there. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I just, oh, good morning in Kansas City and good morning and good afternoon in Tripoli, Greece. 
those in the comments that I've seen just now. Okay, so that's what we've done so far. I'm going to, where did I put my pencil? Where did I put oh, some pen? Let's do a starfish, let's do it. I mean, really, he should be on a rock somewhere or a bit of coral. Can we do it down here? I'm just, I'm just gonna, do, I'm just gonna do it floating about in the middle here because he is a, a rebel starfish. So this is how I draw them. I'm gonna do a straight line up like that, and then I'm gonna do two lines like that and two lines like this. Now, if we were getting geeky, these should all be the same distance apart. This should be the same angle, but it doesn't matter because we're just drawing. So just do it roughly. So roughly draw five lines out like that. Now I am going to draw this into like a star shape. You could get your protractor out, measure this all out and get it super geeky and specific or you just rough it. So that's mine. And then for detailing I like a large circle in the middle and then I tend to do like little dots going out there. Let me draw an ink and just show you. It's like rogue starfish living his best life just hanging out in the middle of the ocean like a boss. And can starfish swim? Like how do they get from A to B? Do they just sort of shuffle along on rocks or maybe they can swim? I really don't know. I love it when you guys tell me the answers. I'm sure there'll be a marine biologist or some awesome mother whose child is totally into rock pools who's like, I actually know the answer to this. Please tell me the cartwheel. I would just love it if they did. I'm going to draw little lines like this because in my head, he is cartwheeling through the ocean like a complete and utter winner. I think that's going to be it for um, for this picture. The only other thing I would say is these bits down here are quite bare bones, so you can add extra details to it. I'm just going to go straight into ink with this, but use your pencil by all means um, and sketch it out. But for example, you could do some extra little lines in here. You could do... If we drew like an extra line like this, we could then fill this, start from the middle and do the middle one first and then work out. I just find that gives you a better flow than trying to go from one side all the way to the other. Somebody asked me once exactly what variation or variety of coral this was that I was pretending to draw. I have no idea. I just made it up. I think it looks quite pretty. <laughs> it just If it looks nice, I'll draw it. Let's do some of those little circles in here that I love so much. Um, let's do some big lines. So for this bit here, I'm going to draw a line down like this. And then same idea again. Do one side and then the other. Like so, we need something in here. I'm going to draw almost like the petal of a daisy. And then a few more on each side. And here I am going to do this. So when it comes, if you're going to add some colour, these bits would be really lovely because you could do like red, orange, red, orange, red, orange or different variations. There we go. Let me zoom out. Look at that starfish. Just living, living his best life. Ta -da! Oh, I've not put any bubbles in the kids. In my head, this one is Evie. The littlest one's Mia, obviously. 
I'm going to leave that there for a second, folks, just so that you can take a look before I switch the camera back over again. As ever, if you've got any um, more questions, post them in a comment below this feed. Hiya. And I will either answer them in tomorrow's video or I'll do a quick answer when I check back online again later today. Tomorrow's class is something a little bit different. So it's going to be a tad shorter, but we're going to do a Halloween themed tutorial. So tomorrow I will be showing you how to draw your very own Halloween skull. So as you know, most of my books, I think all of them actually, all the coloured bits have a heart motif in them and a skull. It's like two things I just really like to draw and there's a different variety of each one of them in my colouring books. So tomorrow, to celebrate Halloween, we'll be doing a Halloween inky skull. I will show you how to do it tomorrow. These would be perfect for drawing for decorations or you could draw up a few different varieties and colour them in yourself. Make your own decorations or just have some really sweet um, colouring sheets for Halloween for yourself, for your kids. Use the basic principle on some Halloween party invitations if you're having a Halloween party. All those good things. Thank you so much again for turning up and watching this video with me. I can't wait to see how you tackle that page in the book. Can I ask a favour folks? Um, if you have got your book already and you are enjoying Inky Art School and loving the course and finding that it really is working. You're managing to draw. I mean, you can always manage to draw, but you're drawing in a way that you didn't think you could before. If you are seeing those results and are like doing it, making bits of art, doodling, drawing, all those good things, could you please, please, please leave me a review on Amazon if that is where you bought your book from because that helps other people to find the book. It's all to do with the algorithms, but essentially the more people we tell about the book, the more people will discover it, find it, find this course when we eventually put it online in the big bad world. More to come on that later. Um, but, but yeah, basically I want more people to discover the thing that you yourself have discovered, that drawing is a shortcut way to give you this really nice digital detox, a good blast of happy, which is what we all need. Uh, and I think that's it for today. That is us. Pop back tomorrow, same time, three o'clock. I'm going to Oh, my child mind is going in. My nanny is going in about the kids. I better go and answer my phone. Uh, I've totally lost my train of thought. You know, when you see that and you're like, that's the person that's looking after your children, what has happened? I'm going to have to go. Nothing will have happened. Nothing. It'll be like, she's run out of juice. Could you pick up some more on your way home? <laughs> but thank you for watching. I'll see you all back here tomorrow. <laughs>